Say hello to my little friend, the Bridgeport Milling Machine. Welcome to Hack a Week. Well, we're here in this big old factory that a friend of mine owns. It used to be a furniture factory, lots of leftover equipment, including a couple of Bridgeport milling machines. And he's been kind enough to let me come in here and use them anytime I want, which is super cool. So I've got the uh, CB750 cylinder head chucked up here and ready to go. But let's backtrack a little bit so I can show you what I'm going to do here, how I've got this all rigged up to be clamped down and milled. So in the last episode, it left off with the uh, connecting rods put on and I needed to clearance the bottom of the cylinder jugs um, so that the connecting rods can swing around without smacking into them. That's what I'm going to do here on the bridge port today. And uh, it doesn't go wide enough on the bottom. The clamp, the jaws that hold the piece in place don't go wide enough to hold the CB750 cylinder head in place. So what I've done is rigged up a little thing here where I've got a couple of uh, spacers on there clamped to some bolts that run all the way through the head. They're clamped down nice and tight and I can just clamp it into the vise with that and uh, I'm gonna go real easy see if it's gonna vibrate around on me or not and what we're gonna do is we're gonna mill these and put a little notch in them right here. Um, just a little teeny notch probably yeah, we'll start out at maybe about four or five millimeters of uh, the meat taken away there. So let's get it in there and get started. We're going to put it in this vise here that holds the work in place for us. Drop it in there, put a little weight downward on it, get it pushed down to the surface as hard as I can, and then clamp it into place. Clamp it down good and tight. I really think that's going to be okay. Now I'll load up a uh, end mill in here and we can uh, start milling this thing. The end mill I have chosen here has a radius on the edges of it. It's a six fluted end mill and it will make a slot in there that will have a radius on the corners. The reason for that is it's never a good idea to have something with a right angle because that's a stress riser, it could cause cracks, a radius is always better. The width of those uh, rods is about 20 millimeters. This measures about 26. So that'll leave me three millimeters on either side. So that's good. Let's get that installed. This is the collet. This is the end mill goes into the collet. The collet goes in here. And then up in the top, there is a big long bolt we turn on the spindle and that pulls it up into place and tightens the collet down and then I'll get on that with a wrench and get it good and tight and we're ready to go. Okay that's way too fast. I'm gonna slow that down quite a bit. That's about a thousand RPMs. That may even be a little fast. Well, that's 800 RPMs. I think I'll start out with that. General rule is the bigger the end mill, the slower you go. If you go too fast, you can just destroy some shit so fast it'll scare you. Now I can move the mill up and down, the end mill up and down here with this lever. I need to center it across the cylinder. So I'm just gonna lower it down about that far. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just use the caliper and just measure from the edges and center it up that way. I could use the lead screws and the numbers and all that and uh, it's not all that critical. If I'm within half a millimeter, I'm good. So let's see, we got about 20 millimeters on that side and we're a little bit too much on that side so we're going to move it over just a little bit let's measure it again that's about 18 and 
that side is about the same. So that's good. We'll lock that down right there. All right, let's adjust the plunge now, the depth of the cut. Let's bring down this to where it hits the edge of the cylinder wall. Right here, I'm gonna take this stop and I'm gonna take it all the way up where it's bumping into this. Let's lock that in place. And now I can move this down to the depth of what I want this plunge cut to be just by turning this dial right here. It's marked in thousandths of an inch. What I'm gonna do is just move it down to about that far. That's, uh, I'm just gonna eyeball that. That's probably about five millimeters. I'm gonna leave it at that. I can lock it in place with this other dial. This is some real seat of the pants machining I'm doing here. I'm not being real precise with the math and the measurements because all I'm really after is just a consistent plunge cut on all four cylinders and then we'll uh, throw it onto the crankshaft here in the top part of the case when we're all done and double check everything make sure we did it enough. Now we're ready to make the first pass so I'll just drop this down where it touches the cylinder. I'm gonna lock that in place, move the cylinder out of the way and then I'm gonna drop this down about one millimeter. We'll just take off about a millimeter at a time. Lock that into place. I've got a little bit of uh, cutting fluid here, coolant. Let's fire it up. Let's start moving the head into the mill very slowly. It's pretty soft, so it's, it's cutting really easy. And then we're all the way through. Now we'll just back up. And we're gonna drop it down about one more millimeter. and repeat the process. I need to just do this on all four cylinders. So right now, through that wonderful magic of video, we'll jump ahead to when I'm all done and we'll check the clearance. That's it, last one. Okay, now we take this whole thing out of here, get it cleaned up, pull the bolts out, and then I'm gonna have to deburr these edges right here because they're really sharp and they'll uh, scratch up my pistons if I just go putting it in there like that. I'll take a half round file and just do a quickie deburr on these. All I need to do is just get rid of the rough edge. Later we'll come back with a, uh, a Dremel tool and a burr and actually give it a good chamfer, but for now, this is fine. That's it, that's really all I need. Do that on all four cylinders. What I've done here now is at the suggestion of one of my viewers uh, that has worked on these engines a lot, and he suggested just leave the crankshaft in the top half of the case, and then you can slide the cylinder on and you can look at it from underneath and actually see the clearance you've got. Now the way I'm holding this in there so that it doesn't move around is I took one of my old bearings for the crankshaft, I put it in here, and it's just held in place with a couple of uh, bolts that would be the case half bolts. And it just, just barely keeps that bearing in place so that it'll still turn. There's a little bit of play in it, but it'll keep the whole crankshaft from falling out when I flip this over. It's pretty heavy. Still got the primary chain on there uh, because I just lifted this whole thing right off from the engine as it was as it was last night. Okay. 
Okay, let's see if we can get this on here without too much trouble. A couple people told me about the trick with little pieces of wood underneath each one of these. That's a great idea. Um, unfortunately, I did not make those ahead of time before this video, but that's okay. I think I can still get them in there all right. Okay, there it goes. It was just a piston binding up a tiny bit. Okay, now we need to flip this whole thing over, but I need to keep the cylinder in place uh, while I do that. Um, a pair of vice grips or something on here would be really handy right now. However, I don't have any with me at the moment, so we'll have to improvise. Okay, I think I found a solution here. It looks like a 2x4 clears the head bolts okay. Now as I flip the whole thing over, I'll just stick a couple of 2x4s in there. That'll work. Oh, now it's really heavy. Got a little clearance there, but not as much as I would like. Let me see if I can zoom down there and, and show you just what I mean. Come on, camera. See that tiny little gap? That's not enough. And over here on one of the other ones, uh, it's really tight. Over on, on this side, that right there is just barely bumping into that conrod. So, yeah, you know, if I chamfer them, it's going to clear okay, but I don't want just okay. I want it to have quite a bit of clearance there. So I think what I'll do is go ahead and uh, pop everything back off and give it one more shot at clearancing everything. So you can see it down in there. Probably pause the video and, and see what I'm talking about. Just that, that tiny little black gap that you see. It's not much. It's about a millimeter. I'd like a little more than that. So no biggie. I'll just pull it all back apart, put it back on the mill, take off another millimeter and call it good. Back in the home workshop now and I've got the Dremel tool here with a small grinder bit on it and I'll just put a chamfer on here, just a bevel. Just like there is on this edge, I'm going to put it on the place where I did the cutout. I'll do one on the inside edge here pretty much just like this and then a little bit on the outside just to get rid of any burrs that may be there. Pretty good it's nice and smooth don't feel any burrs on it I'll get rid of these corners here as well That's about all I need to do to that on all of the cylinders on every one of the cutouts that I did. That feels really good. They're all done now. I'll let you see what they look like up close. You can see the bevel that I put on each one of those cutouts so that they're nice and smooth into the bore. There's no rough edge for the piston to rub against. I want a nice bevel on each edge. Let's put it all back like we had it before and double check those clearances one more time. The clearances are good now. Everything turns around just fine. Nothing bumps into anything. Let's see if I can get it around to the point I had it in the previous shot. Get a little light down in there. 
Well, that looks great. That's a lot of clearance. That's where the connecting rod is at its closest point to the cylinder, and you can see there's a much bigger gap there than there was in that previous shot that I did. Let's check another one over here. See what it looks like. That one looks good. And then the ones on the end, let's rotate this one around. Um, a little more difficult to see that, but that one has also got plenty of clearance. So we've, uh, we've achieved what we were after. Everything's clearance now, and uh, we're ready to move on. Got good clearance in there now. I'm glad about that. The only thing I need to do now is swap out this one bearing with the other ones that I got. Remember I had one in there I wasn't too happy with. I wanted them all to be the same bearing. So I've got the other ones here. I'll pull one of these back off, take a look on my chart here to figure out which one it was. I forgot already. But then I need to put the little uh, locking tabs onto the bolts. Once I do that, torque all of the connecting rods up. Then I can get the pistons back off out of my way and we'll go ahead and put both of the case halves together. I need to really look over this whole bottom end, look through the manual, make sure I've got everything in there that's supposed to be in there uh, because I, I didn't do anything on this. As you recall, I got it from the previous owner this way. So I've got to really go over this with a fine tooth comb, make sure everything's good before I bolt it together and then figure out which bolts go where so I can look on a couple of the OEM drawings on a couple of websites I've talked about in the past, figure out the length of the bolt, where it goes, and uh, that's for another video. But I'm pretty happy with the progress in this one. So anyway, till next time. Seamus, what do you think? How's the project coming along? Good. Seamus, what do you think of the project so far? Pretty good? Are we good?